stuff shuffled around at work. So for the next two days, I'm going to be up at the tent. And from there, I'm going to be going to the farmhouse. Actually, I'm going to the farmhouse tonight. Spend the night with Melissa. And then early tomorrow morning, I'll head out and head to the tent. I'm going to be sighting in deer rifles. My dad's already up there. I'm going to do some final stuff for deer hunting because that's coming up in just a couple of weeks. So you're going to get a video from the tent on Joe and Zach's survival here. And there'll be a farmhouse video when I'm finishing up the tile in that room and doing some other stuff over on the Northern Seclusion Channel. I'm going to stop in and get groceries for the tent tonight and fill up with diesel so I don't have to do it tomorrow. I got all the shopping done. I didn't have that much to get, really. I got some pork steaks because I haven't had those in a while. And I don't know if I'm going to be up there for two nights or one night. I'll leave early tomorrow morning and head up, spend the whole day there tomorrow, spend the night, and then I may spend most of the day there, but that would be Friday, and then head back to the farmhouse for those two days. I don't know if I'll spend the second night, So, but I did get some stuff to cook the second night if I have to. I'll fill up with diesel here and then it's just about six or seven minutes to the farmhouse. Alrighty, all fueled up. Time to go see my baby. Melissa made dinner, and she has laundry in the dryer right now. We're just watching YouTube videos about sailing. Mary. Okay, everyone, well, it's about 10.30 at night. We're just about to go to bed. Tomorrow morning early, I head for the tent. Good morning everybody. It's 5.50 right now. Just have the truck started and warming up. In about 10 minutes it's time to jump in and head to the tent. Okay everyone, it's time to head north. scan through the AM stations and I'm picking up stations from uh, Chicago, WLS, whatever that is on AM, and uh, some station out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. The skies are fairly clear today so you can get radio from a long ways away.
Well, something's been in here. Some critter. There's some dust and hair on the uh, table. That pen was perfectly straight when I left it last time. Piece of paper towel on the floor. And this roll of paper towels has been chewed on. Probably a squirrel. I wonder if they're getting in right there, because most everything else I have sealed up. You know, I do have some pine boards in the back of my truck. Maybe one of the things I'll do when I'm up here is finish that. I don't have any varnish for it, but at least it would be sealed off. Looks like it's 36 degrees in here. Definitely need to get the wood stove going. When I posted uh, the last tent video a couple weeks ago, whenever it was, uh, somebody had commented how I'm like the most prepared person because I had a new damper and some new pipe. And as I'm going through comments and reading that, I stopped everything, opened up a new browser on my, a new tab on my browser, went online and ordered more stovepipe and two more dampers because that was my last one. I usually buy them in twos and then, uh, so yeah, it was kind of nice to get reminded. So that stuff should, I think it arrives at the house today. So I'll have that up here by deer hunting. So I always have uh, more pipe and, and another damper. store and they, every year they have these they're getting harder to find but uh, these three pack of gloves the camouflage the black and the orange and uh, I bought I left one of them at the farmhouse but I bought let's see I've got five of them here so I got six sets of them total that's the kind of gloves I like to wear for deer hunting I can do two pairs on and my hands stay pretty warm Start 
blowing the cold air out of the bedroom and let the warm air come in. Every year when I load that wood bin with uh, wood, the whole front porch anyway, it kind of shifts the way the, the tent platform sits. So, and then it'll hit on top. So I'm just adjusting the door. And in the winter time, it's different too because everything freezes, everything moves just a little bit. So I thought this time I'm gonna adjust the door a little bit and we'll see what happens. Well, I brought up the deer hunting rifles so I can check those and make sure they're sighted in. So I have some uh, shells here. Uh, eventually we'll get to that today sometime. I brought up bottled water and charcoal, so we should be good. I'll probably bring up another couple of uh, things of bottled water, so I'll have enough for, you know, all the way up until this time next year. to my far stand and remember last time I was up there's a few things that need to be refastened, tied off or whatever. Then I looked and I could not find my roll of string so I went over to my dad's for about 20 minutes. I was over there talking to him and I got some string from him and uh, I'll run out there right now and get that taken care of. I'm not even going to bring my gun back here this time. There's a pretty nice deer trail right here. There's no scrapes that I see around. I don't, there's nothing in a rut yet. The, trail kind of comes through here. My stand is right up over there. I'm not really sure where it goes here though. It's real prominent right there and here now it just kind of thins out a little. But if they walk in anywhere in here, I would be able to see them. It gets real thick in here though. It looks like the tracks go through here which is nice when I first put this stand in here this is where they would walk and then it switched and was up over this little ridge so it's harder for me to see 
I mean here, the stand is right there. This is perfect. If they do come down that trail from up here, I mean, it's just wide. You, you know, you say it's wide open, but when they come through here, usually they're coming through pretty fast and you're still freaking out. But I would have a chance anyway. Well, I got everything tied off here and looking good. This one back here was loose, so I tied it behind and right here. Everything should be ready except for I don't have this umbrella roof yet. Ready for opener. My dad for the last couple of months has been talking about when he drives by here and he looks in it looks like it opens up when you get in there about a hundred yards and uh, he mentioned it again today so I'm gonna walk back and just see it's hard to see right now because the Sun is shining on the trees I can't see what's behind them but we'll go in there and take a look There's some real big trees that have blown down here years ago. And you can see the slashings there. I don't know if that was logged or if that's just because these trees blew down. That is one super huge spruce tree. Holy cow. The deer definitely have a trail skirting the outside of this. Just a little blowdown type uh, clearing. And I'm just walking down this way to see what, if it turns swampy or what. This is definitely much lower and much more swampy than it was up there, but that might not be a bad place for a deer stand. See, we're on the other side of the road, if you want to call it a road, from where that big clearing where the clearing stands are. And uh, I don't know, this doesn't look too bad up by that clearing just for a stand. If the wind was wrong on the other side, you could then jump over to the stand on this side and the wind would be correct. So that deer trail runs behind this big tree. I don't know where you would put a stand. I mean, it'd be nice to just put it over on that side and then you could just still see across and not have to cross this to get to the stand. Now I'm over to the side of it. I can hear my truck running up there. So uh, I was thinking before I told him maybe we could just put a ground blind in here, but a ground blind wouldn't do you much good at all with all that brush. Let's head back to the tent. It's 20 to 12. Time to make some lunch.
I can't believe that that last tent video I put up, which was eight days ago, already has 172,509 views. That's amazing. Pretty easy lunch. I want to try the. This is a homemade potato chips that I made in on May 4th of 2013. <laughs> Six years old. Come on, it's gonna be good. They're still crunchy. They're not bad. They taste a little stale. <laughs> Six years though, that's not bad. Still look good. Probably fall over dead in a half hour. I just put out the three paper plates that are on that dead tree. Very, very seldom uh, do you get a shot longer than that in the, most of the stands that I'm at. So there was that one two years ago that was a long ways away, but most of these guns, they should be right on anyway. So I just need to check them to make sure that nothing changed. Well, the first one I'm going to shoot here is my Mossberg Patriot 30 odd 6. It's the one I shot the deer with last year. So far, it's been a pretty good gun. Well, this one is shooting high about two inches. At that distance, probably one inch would be okay, but uh, I definitely want to drop it down a little bit. It's gone. You might want to cover your ears for this, I don't know. I was, I was hoping it would hit it the first right away so my arm doesn't get tired by the time I get to the <laughs> third gun, you know? I've got to do, I got four to do. Well, it came down a little bit, didn't it? But not. Oh, did you? That would work good, yeah. But the tees are easier to see, you know. Yeah. Just a little, maybe half inch below that little, last one. After about a month, half a moment, it's not now. It's a, some of them are more harder, but some are just two screws and then the, the, the action everything comes off. Oh, it does. Good. Yeah. Days like that, it's like, no, I'm just staying in, you know. I'll do the same middle plate on this one. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's bullseye just to the right. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. try one more. Because this one here I adjusted perfectly last year. This is a this has been a good gun too. I would think honor. I will see. Okay. The first two are right in the bullseye. Oh, they were okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. yeah. That's the one. It's just a little bit off on the side. So. And then when this pops open, it's done. Oh, yeah. But you, I'll let you shoot it because yeah, there's no yeah. kick to it. Let me put some more shells in there. I'll put the real one. What the heck do we do? <laughs> no, right here, maybe. Okay. What's that? This is what closed it. Okay. What's so. it? Did you pull it or what? Yep. I just pushed it in. Now it's in. Once it's out means it's okay. empty. Yeah. So so then we put this in. Now you should be able to pull it. It's hard with that scope, but oh, then just let it go. There you go. I saw it go up in there. So yeah, and you just saw on the X that's safety, right? Yep. Right above it. Yep. Go ahead and pull her off a few more times. She's fun. There's one more in there. It takes a while for every gun is different. This trigger pulls harder than some of them. Yeah, it does. Even with between those ones that I yeah. have, they're all different. So now, how did you, did you, 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 you put that green arrow? Okay, that was here. Okay, so, that was just. Um, I think if we just let's see. Oh, oh, oh there's an D. That's fire. Yeah. yeah. It's safety. So then in the morning we put that in there, and then you yeah. pull that back, and it should yeah. slam it in. And then I would double check. I would, after you get it oh, in, yeah. probably just pull it back a little bit to make sure there's yeah. a shell yeah. in there. Yeah. So. Yeah, that, that, that would be perfect. Cause there are there no kick at all. No, it's like shooting a 22 Magnum. It is. Uh, I'm gonna get a plastic bag. I, I do this and put, put over the scope and a rubber band. Okay. Oh, you you, you got one. Yeah. That, that's yeah. good. So. If you want to, you want to just take this with you and put it in your cabin. And leave. Oh, yeah, too. I'll stay yeah. back next weekend and then because come on. the next. Yeah, Okay. All right. So before my dad came over, what were we doing? We're shooting the. Mossberg Patriot, I had to do some adjusting on that one, got that one, so the one bullet was right in the bullseye, one was like within an inch, so that was good. Then I switched over to the gun that Zachary shoots, which is a Winchester Featherweight Model 70, 30 odd 6. His was, one was in the bullseye, one was close to the bullseye, which, you know, I'm sure it was just user error, so we're good on that one. Got that done. Then we shot the gun that Sarah shoots, which is a Ruger M77. This is a 243. This gun is, uh, last year, I think it was the first year I ever adjusted it. And this one here pretty much smacked into the bullseye too. We did pretty good on that. So then after that, you guys have been following all the tent videos and when I was up here on the winter trip 
Last year when we were up here deer hunting was just before my dad had to go in and have brain surgery done for an aneurysm. And um, it was a very extensive operation. And I mean, he, for over a month, he, he doesn't even remember what happened after that. So anyway, it's been recovery all year, but now deer hunting's here and he's all excited, but he shoots either a 308 or a 30 odd six and it's too much jolt for his head right now. So luckily I have my AR-15 in a 223 or a 556 and that is like shooting a 22 Magnum. There's just hardly nothing there. So he was going to go to his deer stand and just use a camera and then we started talking about and he had never shot the AR before and I said you know it has hardly no kick to it at all. So today was the first time he shot it and like he said he said there's like no kick and so that's legal in the state of Minnesota. You know, you have to be, it's the smallest caliber you can use for deer. He will be able to enjoy deer hunting. That scope was dead on right in the bullseye. And um, so yeah, it would just have a little 10 round uh, magazine that goes into it. And we got a uh, shell or a bullet that is the right grain for deer hunting and everything. So. Anyway, he'll be out there if he sees it, because you know what's going to happen. If he doesn't have a gun and he has a camera, a monster is going to come by and he's not going to be able to shoot it. So I think that by him being able to use that gun, uh, he's a lot more excited about deer hunting. So now I have one more gun I want to shoot. This is my Savage Axis in 30 odd 6. This is just a, I would say a backup gun. I like to see if it's right on though because sometimes Sarah, she likes to shoot the 30 odd six. And I mean a 30 odd six will dump that deer a lot faster than, a, you know, the 243, even though I've shot a lot of deer with a 243. Uh, you have a better chance of dropping it in its tracks with the odd six. And last year she did say, show some interest in maybe shooting this one this year. So um, I wanna make sure that I sighted it in last year, it was good. I want to run a couple shells through it and we'll see how it is. If I remember correctly, since this is a light gun, it about tears your arm off when you shoot it. One of them is at the top of the bullseye and one of them is about a half inch to the right and kind of even with the top of the basically it's right on that's a good that's looking pretty good I want to run out to Sarah's stand and Zachary's stand and just uh, last time, you know, last week I checked for, to see how the stand was and stuff, but I just want to look around a little bit more and looking for tracks and see if I see anything. I'm walking in on Zachary's first.
it's hard to tell when you're looking this time of year when they're not in rut yet but uh, they're definitely using this path here it's always nice when you get a couple inches of snow so you can see something This year is a little different than last year. The last few years it's been hunter's choice. You can shoot a buck or a doe. This year it's bucks only. You know, something was different last time when I was out here when I checked Sarah's stand and I didn't really think about it, but somebody has actually come in here and where there's not brush piles in here from when they logged, they've cut the brush around the pine trees here so that, you know, they can grow better, which is really going to help her out or anybody that sits on that stand because you're going to be able to see the deer much better coming through here. Because her stand is right there, and I'm standing pretty much exactly where I shot that deer last year. They even cut it down in here in this little path that goes between that first clearing and the second back clearing. This is the little pine tree that always has the scrape below it every season. Nothing yet, you know, but uh, I bet in a week or so there will be. They trimmed a bunch of it back here also. That's really going to help her out. Well, I haven't been out to my dad's stand. Let's go check that out. I mean, I've been out to my stand in that clearing, but I haven't been out to his stand. Looking at it from this side, it has really grown up this year. Wow. My dad said he almost got lost out here. Not lost, but um, couldn't find his stand. You always go between those two trees, and then you have to take a right. And um, he said everything was so tall, it took him a while to find his stand. He really has this set up nice. He's got the roof over the top. You can't see the, oh there you can. He's got plywood on the back side because it gets so windy in this stand, it's horrible. As long as the wind is not hitting him in the face, he's pretty protected here. This really is an awesome spot for a stand, especially with that stuff growing up like that. Remember two years ago, my, uh, my, I call it my far clearing stand is way over there. And I shot that one deer up on the hill over here. And remember I was dragging it out. And then as I'm dragging it out, after waiting the whole season, not seeing anything. And uh, two different bucks come through <laughs> as I'm dragging out the one. And once again, I was the only one up here hunting that weekend. Melissa just texted me and she's leaving work, so I think I'm going to sit right here and call her and talk to her for a half hour drive home. It's really comfortable in here. I really like this stand. You would not believe it. I just walked out here and I was thinking, 
I'm going to walk out by the road and look up and down the road and see if there's any grouse. And a grouse takes off right on the other side of that piece of brush. <laughs> it flew across the street. I didn't bring my gun out there. It's in my truck. I was just going to drive down to my far stand and turn around and come back just to see if there was any grouse because I mean it's going to be dark fairly soon. And just back a little ways there's a looks like a father and son getting out of their truck to walk a trail. Come around this corner there's another vehicle driving up here doing the same thing I'm doing so first place I can turn around I'm going back to the tent. I'll just turn around where George goes into his stand here. There's the other vehicle I was telling you about. I'm gonna have to move that trailer coming up here. You can already see now that I'm getting more traffic how it starts to chew up the yard. That's why I like to go on the left side, the middle here, and the right side at different times so I don't get big ruts in the driveway or the backyard, whatever you want to call it. I even thought about going fishing today and then uh, decided against it pull the boat out, do all that stuff just to go out one time. Not worth it to me. There we go. It's not perfect, but it's squirrel proof. I really don't know if they were coming in there or not, but it always worries me. I lay in bed and I look up there and I remember when I built the addition on here, everything is pretty tight and that insulation doesn't look like it has been, you know, moved around or anything, but you still have to wonder. I definitely want a baked potato tonight. I, last time I had one was when I was up here well, like nine days ago, I think. And before that, I haven't had a baked potato for a long time. It seems like that's all I eat up here, but that's because it's really easy. <laughs> you know, wrap it, throw it on, and it's done. 
I'm cooking up two of these. I'm going to cook up two pork steaks. I have supper tonight. I don't know if I'll be here for lunch tomorrow or if I will have already headed back to the farmhouse because I have a bunch of stuff to do. And basically almost everything I need to have done is done right now before deer hunting. Or either way, either I'll eat lunch here and go or I will leave and have lunch at the farmhouse and my pork steak and my baked potato will be cooked up. These aren't even that big this time, They're just like a big pork chop. But these cook up fast and the, they're thinner and they are absolutely delicious. I haven't had a pork steak in quite a while. Some canned butter. It is time to eat.
Well, it's about 8.30. I think I'm going to take a break from the journal here. And uh, I'm going to run out and just grab the SD card out of the the one that's on the front of the tent. It's only been eight days, but uh, that one I like to see because it ends up getting a lot of me going in and out and everything, so I like to keep that one clear. And then I can put it back up before I leave tomorrow. This is the last time when I was up here when I was smoking that roast all day. Well, this is after I left. Oh, there's some little critter. Some little thing right there. You, I can't see anything what it is, but... Oh, there was uh, something else there. Right there. Whatever it is, it's small. So this was three nights ago. There's something right there. And then it's right there. It doesn't look like a... I don't know, a raccoon or I don't know, maybe there's a pine marten that's around again. Whatever it is, it likes to, I mean, I would show you closer, but you can't really see what it is. And there I am today, the 17th. There's my dad and I shooting the guns. That's it. Yon Rog will catch up to me soon. We've got to get to the core before he does. Okay everyone, well it's 5 minutes to 11. I'm going to bed. The wind is still picking up, the skies are clear, and the moon is pretty bright tonight. Good morning everybody. I've been up for quite a while just waiting for it to get light out. It's pretty nice out there. I mean it's not bad but the wind is still um, it's still there and it looks like it's going to be picking up throughout the day. But I'm only planning on being here for a few hours maybe and then I'm going to head to the farmhouse. I need to get the tiles set today so tomorrow I can do the grout and Sunday get the washer and dryer put back in there.
Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. It's 22 days until the Minnesota deer hunting opener starts. I'll for sure be up here then. I may make it up here in between now and then, but uh, if I don't, everything is completely ready to go. By then, the lake will start to freeze over. Things are going to be getting chilly. But for right now, I'm heading south to the farmhouse. I'll see you guys in a few hours over on the Northern Seclusion Channel. Got delayed about, I don't know, probably almost a half hour. That's the first time I've seen George in quite a while. He's heading out right now to check his deer stands. on the next video.